All right, my dear Bible in 365 brothers and sisters, we have arrived at the book of Jeremiah. And folks, this is a powerful book. It's a big one. That's why he's called the major prophet, because of the size of the body of his work. And I can spend all kinds of time getting into everything that leads into the book of Jeremiah, but we don't have time in the length of these summaries. I could literally spend two hours just going over the geopolitics of the time during Jeremiah, and I, I literally, folks, just going three times speed wouldn't be able to do it in 20 minutes. So, what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to tell you to go through my introduction on the book of Jeremiah uh, on the website. You can go to jameskadis.com to learn it. Um, there's a lot that I put out there, and I've done a lot of work with the prophet Jeremiah that is really important for you guys to be able to understand. Now, there are a bunch of events that happens during the time of Jeremiah that I do talk about and I will talk about because you guys need to be aware of some of those events. Like, for example, uh, during the time of Jeremiah, uh, this is where you would see Josiah being killed. This would also be the time where Nineveh is destroyed by Babylon. This would also be the time that the Battle of Karshemish takes place, where Egypt is destroyed by Babylon. This would be the time where the three sieges, the 605 siege, the 595 siege, and the 586 siege takes place of Judah, the southern kingdom. These are the sieges where Daniel, Ezekiel are taken away. And of course, this would also be the siege. The last siege of the three would be the one where half a million men, women, and children are taken. And folks, there are lots of kings that the ministry of Jeremiah touches. Manasseh, Ammon, Josiah, Yehoahaz, Yehoiachim, Yehoiachin, and Zedekiah. All of those kings are important. They are very critical for you to know and understand regarding the southern kingdom and why they're significant is important. Also, you should know that Jeremiah has a lot of contemporaries, okay? And there's a lot of them, okay? First of all, Obadiah would have been a contemporary. Nehum would have been a contemporary. Habakkuk would have been a contemporary. Zephaniah would have been a contemporary. Daniel would have been a contemporary. Ezekiel would have been a contemporary. And undoubtedly, make no mistake, all of these guys would have known each other in one way or another, especially because of the way that they ministered. A lot of really important things. By the way, I should note this. Um, you should know that Zephaniah was actually somebody who helped Jeremiah. Same thing with Habakkuk. They both helped Jeremiah. That's how uh, close they were in terms of their time with one another in the southern kingdom. Again, all of these things are important to know, but there are a few chapters that I want to call your attention to. I think all the chapters are important, believe it or not. I think they're all critically important. But if there are some chapters I really want you to pay attention to because I think it's going to maximize the benefit these are the chapters I want you to read two times, three times, four times. These are the chapters I want you to make extra careful notes concerning because of what they mean. The first one is chapter one. I want you to pay special attention to chapter one, and I want you to document the circumstances behind the call of Jeremiah and what actually God tells him and what he says in return. That is a very, 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 very important chapter in Jeremiah, and it is one that I want you to pay attention to because if you don't pay attention to it, you are going to miss the opportunity to understand how God is calling you to do the work that God wants you to do. And I think that it's a really, really important thing. The other passage that I want you to pay attention to is the potter's clay passage and the clay jar. That would be Jeremiah 18, and that would be Jeremiah 19. There's a big reason why I want you to go through this because, again, it's going to help you understand understand not only how God thinks concerning you, but his call and his purposes for you. You can learn so much through Jeremiah. I also want you to learn Jeremiah chapter 20, because this is the famous chapter where he is imprisoned. And I think it's really, really important that you read it. Also, Jeremiah 23, which discusses the many false prophets during this time. That's another valuable passage to be reading, especially in the midst of some of the crazy pastors that are doing the most insane things in the world, okay? The other chapter, and this one is so important, Jeremiah 29. Now, lots of people quote Jeremiah 29, 11, but 29, 11 is one of the most misquoted passages in the Bible. It comes with a lack of understanding concerning the history of that chapter and the context. 
But Jeremiah chapter 29 is a letter that Jeremiah writes to the exiles that are in Babylon and the ones who would have been the most notable recipients of that letter would have been Ezekiel and Daniel. And Daniel actually mentions that letter in Daniel chapter 9 when he does the things that he actually does. So this is really important to note this. It's critical and it will give you deep rooted insight into not only God's judgment and what he does and how he thinks, but it will also teach you some things that you must be made aware of because losing sight of these things are going to cause you to think about things differently and you're not going to understand what God is doing in the midst of all of this. And I think it's really, really important, okay? There's another chapter that you need to pay attention to and that is Jeremiah 32. Jeremiah 32 is when Jeremiah buys a field. Now, the reason why this is important is because you can gain great insight as into how Jeremiah heard the voice of God. Like, how in the world did he hear God's voice when God was speaking to him? You will learn that in Jeremiah 32, which is why I tell you to follow up on it because I think it really, really is important. And of course, the other, and I think it's really important section of Jeremiah to follow up is the second time he's in prison, which would be 37 and 38. There's some really famous passages that are in there. And again, lots that we can learn. The other passage that I want you to read about is in Jeremiah 44, when Jeremiah makes his final appeal before the nation is destroyed, because it is a remarkable one, and it is one that is critical. And then as you start getting near the end of Jeremiah, you'll begin to see Jeremiah proclaim judgment upon the people that chose to discipline God's people when God should have been the one to do it. And so there's a lot to say there and a lot to be um, uh, understanding. Of course, when you get to 52, it may be the most tragic of all the chapters, and that's when you see the fall of Judah and the captivity that happens consequentially after. It's very, very sad, but there's so much you'll learn from this uh, book. It's powerful, and folks, stay in it. Make it your goal to understand it because there is a lot that I want you to know. One last thing, and I think this is important. Just because I've only emphasized eight or nine chapters does not give you the excuse to not look closely at the rest of the chapters. I want you to place a spectacularly heavy emphasis on the chapters that I mentioned, but I want you to pay attention to all of them. I want you to look at all of them. I'll give you a great example of why this is important. If you're somebody that's thinking about quitting because you've worked so hard and it feels like all of your work keeps getting destroyed, how about Jeremiah writing his whole life's work down and it getting burned and God saying, I want you to write it again. There's so much that you can learn from that story. So don't miss out. There's a lot of powerful stuff in this book. I don't want it to be removed from you. It's great. Keep your eyes on the prize and know that God has some amazing things that he wants to tell you through your study of this book. By the way, great job, folks. I am so proud of you. I cannot believe that we are at the end of the month of September. We are in the midst of fall, and I can tell you so much incredible stuff is around the corner. I'm excited about it. I hope you guys are excited about it. And I can also tell you that the plan that God has for you is remarkable. Just submit to it, folks, okay? Just submit to what God has for you and watch God do great things. I love you guys. Keep fighting the good fight. And by the way, keep on reading. It is having an effect on you. You might not even realize it in the moment, but God is changing you as you're dedicating yourself to his word. Keep on doing what God's called you to do. We love you guys. God bless you. Keep fighting the good fight.